with another video, another treasure, another invention craft to showcase the diverse culture of my beloved country, Philippines! Many years ago, natives of Cebu and the Chinese traders used a bakat to store farm yields during harvest season. The harvests stored in several bakat is transported by a carabao draw sled to the nearest market. Those who did not take their village carabaos, they had no choice but to carry bakat on their heads. So, that is how the bakat was used by the native Cebuanos. And this time, I'm going to show to you how this indigenous craft was made by the Cebuano people. Roll with the art. The first step is to gather the bamboos as the primary material. As much as possible, weavers usually choose the younger bamboos as it is the most preferable to use. Next step is to cut the bamboos at the desired height and width of the basket and this would be according to the size of the basket to be made. Then. We have to convert it into thin strips for easy weaving. In forming the base, the weaver shapes the bakat using a guide that is usually the completed one. From the base, the weaver bends the strips to form the basket's body in horizontal to the direction to form several coils radiating to form its rim. To strengthen its shape, the weaver uses a thicker strip to form the rim that warrants its strength. Tightening the rim ensures the basket's quality and strength. That's it guys! I'm Jane Handuman, 19 years of age, from Mula Liluan, Cebu, proud Filipina. And this vlog is all about indigenous crop which is patadyong and antique. But before I discuss patadyong, let me tell you what this indigenous crop is. Indigenous crop are the products manually created by the ethnic and tribal groups in the Philippines. These are arts that are purpose in nature as they reflect the way of life during early times. It portrays how they manage and organize their living practices. Proven from the design of the textile, life cycle events can be seen similar to the clay pots and basket they preserved to, etc. Indigenous crop describe the person and the community. This crop serves as a starting point of manual innovation that has lasting meanings and functions to the society. An art that is a product of soul, mind, heart, and hand. So, what is patadyong? Patadyong is a malong light blanket when described in a very simple term. It is a type of textile made from a cotton, a baka, and polyester. It has checkered patterns that makes it more beautiful and different from other malongs. The women of Barangay Bagtason in Bugaso, Antique, manually weave patadyong. Artistically fusing colorful threads, the Bagtason Loom Weavers Association is the producer of the quality loom woven products in Antique. 
The embroidery of their petodion is implying a pattern that is significant in their area. In history tells that the art of petodion weaving came from the Malay datus that moved to Panay, escaping the persecution of their native empire in Borneo and Sumatra. One legend also tells that Datu Nubai was the one who taught the people in Bugaso in making the patadyong. How to make a patadyong? Patadyong weaving takes a lot of time and effort. The old process of it has remained unchanged and what inspiration is the passion of the BLWA weavers in making the patadyong despite the availability of the modern weaving machines. It is done by interlacing different colorful threads through a wooden handloom called Tayral o Habula. Here are the six steps in making the patadyong. First is measuring the thread or pasabong. Second is arranging the thread o paglikis. Third is inserting the thread in the binting o pabinting. Fourth is inserting the thread in the reed o pagsulod. Fifth is transferring the thread from the cone to talinyas o pagtalinyas. Lastly is weaving the patadyong o pagpanara. So what is the purpose and uses of patadyong? Patadyong is like a malong that should be like garments of muslin but with a chickered or play design. The patadyong has a variety of uses, primarily women who use it as a skirt, pair with a blouse called kimona, just like what I wear today. So it uses as a hammock and even portable bathroom and changing room. Also, it is comfortable while washing and taking bath in the river with either one hand or teeth holding the patadyong to soap and clean their bodies with another hand. Assured of protection from malicious eyes. The purpose of it to others, they use patadyong as a head cover or shawl to protect from the rain or the heat of the sun. They also use it to rough fruits and vegetables so that they can easily care. In houses, people use it as a curtain, table cover, mat, and blanket. This just explained the patadyong, despite of the rise of imported textile, has still survived from the passage of time. That's all, so I hope you learned something in this vlog. Please do like, share, subscribe. And click the notification bell for more updates on upcoming videos. Bye! Past years, we have learned many things, but we should also learn how to treasure the past. Magandang araw! Good day everyone! I am Joyce Ann Jaime, 20 years old, living and born in Cebu City in year 2000. So what is the purpose of this video? I will introduce to you not just about this indigenous craft, but also to the story behind the craft and who are the people that made this craft possible. Philippines may be a small country, but it has something that we can be proud of. Our culture, our tradition, our art, and our crafts. So first, let me introduce to you this indigenous people that had a culture that started way back the old times and still present until today. They are already featured on one of the TV show of the GMA Network, which is I Wonder, here. And also, they are known for having a tribe named as Panaybukidnon, also known as Tumantok tribe, and also known as Suludnon tribe. They can be found and seen to the areas within cafes, and also some are can be seen to the mountainous area of Iluido TV. This tribe has something that they are proud to represent, and that is their cafe in Panaybukidnon. Mandok tribe is known for having a binokot. This binokot is the one who mastered this craft. They will intricate it to the clothes of their family members, especially their father and brother. In fact, their culture and how they act is shown by Carrie David in, his, in her show, Eyewitness. It can also be seen to a teleserie which is entitled Amaya, which is lead by Marian Rivera and a show of Nora Honor entitled To Us. So this binukot are the girls that came from a very rich family that is isolated in a room and they are not allowed to go outside and can be seen with others. They are known for their chants and cafe. Why are this important? It is because it is the design that makes the panubo unique. So what are the things that we need? First is the needle. Second is the different colors of yarn or thread. 
and the third one is the cloth where they will intricate the design. You will use the needle in making the design. The very important thing here is knowing the different designs of the child. One of those is Pokoto called Gurite, Tikag Tikag, Matang Kunai, and such. So, if this is the finished product, story behind Pokoto. Pokoto is a representation of a begge. A begge pose, which for the child represents lofty and fertility. While Matang Kunai is a design that came from a symbol of a kunai bird, which they will see as a very gentle and loving bird. And this exists in one of the epics, which is entitled Alayam. But in a piece of art, Palubok denotes the keenness of the tribe's elders within their surroundings, and also it develops their creativity in order to be in deep connection within the environment. It is also one of the tribe's source of income. That is the reason when pandemic arrived, their income was also affected. But a local designer saw the uniqueness of the design because this embroidery may mainly focus to the design and the story behind it. Yakov made a Kubandok, a Panubok mask series where he will use a denim fabric intricating the design of the Panubok and that is the reason even though it is pandemic, the tribe in was being uplifted. Now it is already made known and heard by other local residents within the area. So it is not just the tribe, it is not just the Binukot, but the people within the society. If we remember a quote wherein it is not enough that we preserve the thing, but it is more important to preserve it and keep it alive. Keeping it alive, meaning we will teach the younger generation. So I will end this vlog with a words from Mahatma Gandhi that says that a nation's culture resides within the heart and the soul of its people. Good day everyone! Thank you and God bless. Hi, good day. My name is Jenny Rose Pisao, 20 years old and was born in the majestic place of Kalinog, Iloilo City. Since I was born and raised in Iloilo before we transferred here in Cebu, I have enjoyed the beautiful culture of my hometown, aside from the delicious delicacies that we have, we also have the Dinagyang Festival and our very own Hablon. One of the things in which Iloilo can be proud of, and I must say, it makes Iloilo as a textile capital of the Philippines. Hablon is a hand-woven fabric woven by women of Panay, particularly in Iloilo, for more than a century now. It is traditionally made of local fibers such as pinya, abaca, and cotton. It is one of the oldest craft in Iloilo that has survived through the passage of time. Hablon, taken from the Hiligaynon word habol, which means to weave, refers to both the process of making the fabric and the end product. Weavers can compare hablon weaving to a tinikling dance, but the difference is that tinikling is way more harder than hablon weaving. Weaving is a time-consuming, meticulous, and a laborious process. Weavers follow a step-by-step -step process which makes it more time-consuming. It starts with planning where the thread cones in selected colors are arranged according to the desired pattern. Warping or sabong is where threads are set on warping tool. These threads are grouped and rolled along the bamboo and metal pegs of the warping frame. Threads are counted by hand based on the desired length, width, and design. Beaming or likis where threads from the warp are rolled along the weaver's beam. Heading or sulod sa binting where each thread passes through the opening of the head. Leading or sulod sa salod where each thread is inserted on each opening of the metal reed using a bamboo hook. Tie in or sulod sa baston where the end of each threads are tied into the cloth roll 
a wooden cone at the base of the loom. Spooling or pangalinyas where the weft thread needed for the shuttle are spooled using a traditional spooling wheel. And finally, weaving or habol, the weaver steps on the bamboo petal trays or lower the heddle. The weft is propelled across the loom by a shuttle and then the weft is pushed against the fell of the cloth by the reed. Handloom weaving is a treasure in Iloilo that's why we salute all the weavers because they keep our culture alive through their passion and dedication to their work. Hand-woven hablon clothes are used for making table runners, table clothes, pillowcases, handkerchiefs, bags, slippers, barongs, and shows. They are popular gift items especially among foreigners as it is their beautiful reminder of their adventure in Iloilo. dahon ng buri ay ginamit ng mga katutubong asyano mula pa noong una, ilang daan taon na ang nakalipas. Bori is the largest and common palm found in the Philippines. Its scientific name is Corypha ilata. The plant lives up to more than 30 years. Because of its varied uses, Bori ranked next to coconut and nipa in economic and industrial importance. This product is famous among Cebuanos because these are utility hats mainly used by farmers to shield them from the harsh tropical sun in the fields. So, that is how the Bori hat used by the native Cebuano. This time, I will show to you how this indigenous crops Ang pangunahing proseso bago ito ganap na magamit ay ang pag-aani, pagbilad, pag-aakab, pag-ikip at paglilas. At sa pagtatapos ng mga prosesong ito, maaari nang bigyang daan ang paghahabi ng matitibay, makukulay at makakalikasang produkto na kapakipakinabang maging sa pang-araw-araw na gawain na talaga namang pang-export quality. And for today's video, may share ako sa inyo guys, ito ay tungkol sa isa sa mga treasure craft here with the Philippines, lalo na lalo na sa Visayas, at ito ay matatagpuan sa San Lorenzo de Mara City. At hindi yan lang, ito talakay ko din kung paano at kung sino ang gumawa nito at ang kanilang artistic and social purposes. And now 
Lorenzo Guimaras is not just known for their very own windmill farms, but also they have a lot of craft made out of their own hands. Oh, so, so the raw materials being used in sapal weaving are only the pandan leaves which they planted everywhere in their backyards. San Lorenzo is one of the center of making eco-friendly pandan bag. And in making the sapal bag, the process begins with the cutting of leaves and removing the thorns on its edges. It's a continuous process. It's been later dried. Wafers just air drying to have a nicer and smoother texture. The next process would be to arrange and plately cut into smaller pieces with the use of their alternative cutting machine. And lastly, the pandan leaves are ready to be waved to become a hand-woven bag. Hi guys, these are the pandan bags and in making this bag, as we all know, we need a great skills, effort and also time. So by that, we should appreciate, love and promote this to our country. But not just that, they have also artistic and social purposes like when you're going to shopping, go to mall, you can use this as a fashion bag and in going to supermarket you can use this as your food storage instead of using plastic because that's a great help in conserving our environment and also this serves as livelihood and um, source of income in the village of Sapal that would be all for today's video keep on subscribing guys and thank you for watching What's up guys? For today's vlog, we will tackle about basketry in Aklan. But first, allow me to introduce myself. I am Jocelyn Nicole D. Martinez and I will be 20 years old this coming next week. And currently, I'm living in Cebu City, Cebu. So, what are you waiting for? Alats na! At, meron tayong tatlong tanong na magbibigay gabay sa atin upang ating talakayin itong basket race sa aklan. Unang tanong, saan ginawa itong basket race? So, gaya ng sinabi ko, ito ay nakilala sa aklan. So, technically, it was also made originally in aklan. Pangalawang tanong, paano at sino ang gumawa nito? Dahil sa aklang ito, nadiskubre, malamang, ang mga aklanos din ang gumawa nito. Pero, hindi nakasaad sa Google. <laughs> Joke! Hindi nakasaad kung sino talaga ang unang nakadiskubre. Nakalagay lang doon na ang mga taga-aklan ang gumawa noon. At napaka-interesado nito kung paano ito ginawa. Kasi ang ibang bagay ay meron silang uh, steps by step on how to make it. But basketry was made with different techniques. The first one is coiling. Hindi siya masyado marinig natin pag binanggit natin ng salitang wavy. Pero, uh, isa itong pamamaraan na gamitin sa basket tray. Pangalawang, pangalawang technique, plating. At ang pangatlo is twinning. Yung plating at twinning, magkasing tulad lang yon Ang pagkaiba lang is, yung plating, dalawang... Uh, Dalawang thread ang 
pinag-twist upang pumuo ng banig at gawing basket. So, itong twinning, it sounds like a braid in the hair. Kasi, tatlong strips yun. Tatlong strips na pinag- uh, twist around the warp para bumuo ng banig at gawing basket. The last but not the least question is that what are the artistic and social purposes? So, the artistic for this basket trick is that it is can be bag, into bag. It sounds like a basket tray, but you can use it as a bag also at the same time. Why? Because we will know them in the social purposes. It depends on how they use it. Sa ating mga nanay, but pwede nilang gawing itong basket or tray sa bahay. Uh, lagyan nila ng mga gamit kung saan presentable tingnan, di ba? Lalo na pag mayroon tayong bisita, lalagyan ng mga prutas, lagyan ng mga uh, mga tani, tanim at bag. Kasi, itong mga tatay natin, uh, doon sa mga, lalong-lalong lalo, lalo na sa mga probinsya, itong, ba, itong basket tray, gawing itong bag sa mga tatay, kasi lagyan ito nila ng manok, <laughs> ng pangsabong. Hindi ko alam anong Tagalog doon na. Pero, sa, uh, dito sa Cebu, uh, pag magsasabong sila or bibili sila ng manok, manok, as in literal na manok, uh, hindi nila ito ilagay sa plastic bag. <laughs> hindi ko alam kung bakit. Instead, they will put this kind of, chick, kind of chicken in this basket tray. Because, kung titignan nyo, para siyang, uh, ito talaga, lagyan nila ng uh, manok, at kung magsasabong man sila, ito din ang lagyan nila. So, for today's vlog, I think that will be all and sana meron kayong natutunan sana, sana at alam ko medyo boring yun <laughs> kasi wala akong hinalong medyo kalukuhan diba? Oh, kind of twist so I hate to say I really hate to say this but goodbye and I hope you learn something new and fun. Bye-bye! Hello everyone! In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about Sinamay, which is an indigenous girl from the Visayas. So, um, it is made from the leafstalks of the Abaca tree, which is known as Musa Textiles. So, from its modest beginnings as the raw materials from our forefathers' cores, such as rigid garments, the boots, the slippers, and it is also the, the premier fiber that has come a long way. And about the fact that the Abaca is still used, um, still used for a lot of reasons today, its application has vastly grown and improved from a basic fiber to a sophisticated industrial application it is used um it is used in meat and sausage um, casings um cigarette paper filter paper stencil paper and especially in currency note so now let us talk what is abaca so like i said abaca is known to be mosa textilis which is an indigenous in the philippines where the warm the humid climate and volcanic soils are ideal for growing it it's been grown in the philippines for decades and filipino um, knew about it even before the Spanish have arrived. So, moving forward, let us now talk about the craft, which is sinamay made from the abaca. So, sinamay is a fabric by by the natives of the Philippine Islands, which is coming from the leaf stalks of the abaca or mosa textilis. So, usually it is mixed with silk, cotton, and pinya. And sinamay is commonly known for um, blacking hats and trims but it wasn't applied really to the millinery until the 1990s. It is woven in the Philippines from the stalks of the abaca trees and abaca fibers are extremely durable and solid. So, sinamay is often free-stiffened 
um, during the processing to make the blocking easier. And furthermore, since it is a natural substance, it takes time. Well. So how are cinnamide made and how are they produced? So first is that all fibers must be dried before being stored. They may be sun dried in the open or air dried in a shaded structures. So all the fiber must be dried and after it has been classified based on its quality, it is combed to separate the fiber strand and so they can be joined together to produce a long and continuous thread and the thread is wounded around a spindle to, pre to prepare for weaving and most abaca straws are woven on a traditional loom and in cinema production, abaca fibers is used for both warp and web. So, the usage of Sinamai cannot be measured since there are a lot. Sinamai is a versatile foundation material which can be used to create all kinds of stunning hats and shapes. This, um, the uses of Sinamai in the millinery are impossible to count. So, it can be used to create complex layered constructions as well as basic brims and sturdy hat bases. So, it is also pliable and can be used to stunning effect in free shaping. With its gorgeous and expanding um, range of colors, its firm yet pliable texture and its boundless versatility. It has since become the most popular foundation of materials for hat making. Apart from hat, cinnamon can also be used in different products such as bags, pouches, home decorations, clothing, and ribbons. Good day everyone! I am Sheila Marie C. Morton, 20 years old, and I was born here in Cebu City, I am proud to say, I am a Filipino. Today, I'll let you show one of the indigenous crafts we have here in the Philippines. This indigenous craft is clay pots in Lazo Aklan. Come and join me as we discover where is the origin of this craft, the process and the people behind in making these beautiful clay pots, and what are the artistic and social purpose of making these. So, let's get started! This craft can be seen in Lazo Akla. Lazo is the smallest municipality in their province. It has a population of around 15,000. It's just a small town, but there are more than a couple of things you can see in here. They have this plaza where most events are held, and a lot of kids are playing around in here, just like flying kites or playing basketball. They have a town hall which is situated beside the church where you can go in and up the stairs to the balcony to have a view of the whole plaza and other municipal buildings. Just down the road from the plaza is the church of the town, a beautiful old room, which was built on 1910 and still remains to be one of the municipality's landmarks. For the brave ones, you can climb up the bell town to see a nice panoramic view of the town. Beside the church is the Bayangan village. Bayangan is a local dialect which means potter's day. This is where local small beautifully designed jars, clay pots, and other clay products in different shapes and sizes. At the pottery, you can ask if you can try luck in making something. As in most small towns, a walk around is the best thing to do to explore and interact with the locals who are always friendly and accommodating. The Lizanias are truly innovative and resourceful. They made pots made out of clay since they have a mountain of clay soils in their area. Residents living by the riverbank make their living making different shapes and sizes of clay pots and jars. After molding the clay, they can beautifully design it. The coloring of these jars is different because they have yet to be hardened in the clay. Afterwards, their coloring will be rich red brown. Plot makers are situated and displayed their finished handmade pots near the Aklan Riverside. Some still practice the natural drying process of pots, which 
which lasts for days and even weeks. Only after that, will these clay pots be ready to face a great furnace for pagpa that uses firewood to make them hard and durable. Most of them uses clay. These clay pots are mainly used for popping plants. Clay pots provide a healthy environment for most plants. The porosity of clay allows air and moisture to penetrate the sides of the pot. This moisture and air is utilized by the fine roots located at the edge of the soil wall. Clay pots also act like a wick to remove excess moisture from a potting soil. If you buy directly from the village, you can get a much cheaper price from the sold in the market. Some people who purchase several products from one store can have a big discount and can also get freebies like this. The prices of their products vary depending on their sizes and design. They have this festival called Bayangan Festival, which is celebrated in line with the foundation day of the municipality every 6th of July, which showcases cultural dance presentation with Pagbayan concept and street dancing in joining the Sanyus to participate in the merrymaking around the Pabashan or town center. Their props are usually clay pots or vases. And that's it! Always keep this in your mind that you should never be ashamed of your own roots. Let the world know that you are proud of being a Filipino. And one of the ways of showing that you are proud is by buying and using some of those indigenous crafts made by our fellow Filipinos. I hope you have learned something from me. Paala! Magandang buhay! I'm Zin Mafegerse, 20, from Cebu City. And for today's video, we are going to talk about one of the things that we Filipinos should be proud of. And that's... Piña! Piña production in the Philippines dates back to the 16th century during Hispanic era. Though our local ancestors already know the practice of fabric weaving using different fat fibers. It is the Spaniards and the Spanish colonizers who introduced to us the usage of piña and fabric weaving. So we can really say that piña weaving has much longer history in the Philippines, particularly in Aklan. So let's find out what does it make a piña a very good material for fabric weaving. Piña makes a luxury fabric, softer than hemp, and is glossy like silk. It is lightweight, low maintenance, and blends well with other fibers. It is not the only thing that we should know about piña, because piña fabric is a very good material for barong for men and Filipinas for women, the one-piece shirt and the women's turnout, the blouse and the long skirt. And before, when you say you were going to a party, gathering, um, you are going to church, it means that you have to dress in piña. And also, wearing piña, um, it wearing piña also means a lot because it has social implications that if you're wearing one, you belong to an aristocratic family or you are an aristocrat. So, which means that if you wear one, then that means you are a rich. So what is the process of piña weaving? Before pineapple fibers become ready for weaving, it has been through different processes. First, fibers are extracted from the inner layer of the leaves of the native pineapple plant. The edge of a piece of half coconut shell is run through the surface to extract the inner layer of fibers. Only long and fine but tenacious inner fibers are used to produce the dough. 
flexibility in your tax time. The extracted fibers go through a process of becoming a bunch of fibers and repeatedly beaten to the paddle, then washed in the river before being air dried for easier separation into individual fibers. Each fiber is then connected end to end before these are counted and arranged on a long cylindrical warping frame. The fibers are set up for weaving on a long rectangular pedal frame loom. On the loom, the wooden piña is embellished with floral patterns such as Sampaguita buds and other beautiful designs. Based on the video, we can really say that it is a very painstaking process. It needs a lot of effort, energy, resources to make piña fabric. So we must appreciate especially that piña fabric represents us Filipinos. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye! Greetings to everyone. By the way, my name is John Clafford Tapa. I am 21 years old and I live in municipality of Balamban, also known as the shipping capital of the Philippines. So today we're going to talk all about one of the indigenous crops in the Philippines. We all know that the Philippines is entitled as the Pearl of the Orient Sea. Aside from we are close to the Pacific Ocean, we are divided into more than thousands of islands. So expected we are we are rich in marine resources. Capri's shell is a revolved marine mollusk where its outer shell is used for making heavy crops or any commercial use. Examples of this are the shells, the clubs, and the scallops. Have an external covering that is two-part hinge shell that contains a soft-bodied invertebrate. Aside from it is edible, craftsmen valued more for its shell because the shell have used for a thousand of years as a glass substitute because of their durability and translucence. Did you know that the Capist shell is named after one of the provinces of the Philippines, which is the Capist City, since it is where it flourishes and it's very abundant. Capist shell crops are very popular, not only as a home decoration, but also found in hotels, condominiums, malls, cities, restaurants, and on different architectural buildings. According to the craftsman, the Decapis shell is a very versatile material that you can do a lot of possible things out of it. One of the examples of this, we have the chandeliers, another lampshades, lanterns, fashion jewelries like this one, and also the candle holders. These are just a few of the products that you can make out of the Capist shell material. Just a few tips, just expand your creativity and widen your imagination so that one day you will be also create one of the best crafts in the Philippines. So, according to the Capis people, that wearing this kind of Capis shell, it embodies elegance. And I think you should do all of Thank you. Mm. The best indigenous craft that represent our country is the Capis shell product. Because and I do believe that we are entitled as the Pearl of the Orient Sea, I think it is an, an indication that we live in an area where the shells, where the marine resources are flourishes and it's very abundant. So I think this would be the best crafts that symbolize as our identity. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Marga's Vlogs. 
By the way, for those who are new to my channel, I am and Margaret Heraldas, 21 years old, and I am from Cebu City, Philippines. So for today, we will be talking about the Cebu's handcrafted guitar. So aside from the beautiful faces and the sweet smile of its people, the province of Cebu is known for as a home for handcrafted guitars. So it's an industry that adds more musical flair to its rich culture. Throughout the Spanish period, this guitarra or guitarra is believed to have been first manufactured or introduced in Cebu. The industry began when the friars first landed in the province of Cebu. So by the time they have this um, holy masses in the area and then their um, instruments were broken by the time and they needed accompaniment for their gospel songs. So instead of waiting for the guitars to arrive from Mexico, they commissioned the townspeople in Open Village in Mactan Island to make guitars and fix the existing guitars they had. Thus began the guitar industry in the province of Cebu. These handmade guitars are commonly made of soft and hard woods like Lanka or jackfruit, polysander, mahogany, almacida, acacia, and mango. Designs in every handcrafted guitar ranges from simple to intricate decors such as inlaid shell props. Cebuanos cut and shape the wood to form the necessary parts of the instrument. Then they set them aside for a few days to fully dry. are fully dry, the assembling takes place, putting the pieces together, use wood glue and apply pressure. Necessary parts are glued together, then glossing follows. Each piece undergoes quality control and are set for final touches. The townspeople of Open Village in Mactan Island made use of this instrument as a companion to any genre of music, especially for hymnals during Holy Mass. Also, Cebuano men use it before for courtship where they go to the girl's place and play a song as they ask the girl out. Today, these handmade guitars are widely used by many famous local musicians. Hi, I'm Angelica Hilguela. I'm 24 years old. Um, my birthplace is in Bantayan Island. This is originated from Philippines and it was created by Ramon Valera. Ramon Valera was a Filipino fashion designer who was bestowed with a national artist of the Philippines, owner in 2006. He is the first and only Filipino fashion designer to receive the distinction to date in 2017. His work was displayed in an exhibit called Valera and the Modern, an exhibit on the life and work of national artists for fashion designer. Ramon Valera, which was curated by Jerry Torres, 
at the LaSalle College of St. Bernard School of Design and Arts Gallery. Valeria's gown have worn by notable Filipina women including Gloria Romero, Barbara Perez, and Emilda Marca. This Filipiniana dress, it has a foolish texture and natural of white color. Just on the other hand, uh, a machine woven finished product are also transparent and lightweight. Some just fabrics are made of pinya and silk threads but most consist of abaca. This Filipiniana dress symbolizes a reminder that our country is rich in culture and natural beauty. Aside from that, it brings a new consciousness, acceptance, and appreciation to the younger generations who may not see yet in the relevance, in the beauty, and the pride that comes with wearing, with wearing a new one. Thank you everyone for continuing and promoting our local indigenous craft. Bye-bye! I'm Mary Jane Gurira, 21 years of existence and I was born in the province of Leyte. For today's video, let me share with you an indigenous craft being made here in Visayas, particularly Antiquiros town in the province of Baja. And for everyone's knowledge, art is embedded in our culture since the beginning of time up to the present and it is one thing that can never be lost in a culture no matter what it goes through. The Philippines, our country, having a rich culture also has its own share of arts that is discovered and practiced and is applied in a day-to-day -day living. Here in my video, let's focus on basket weaving which is mainly used of the people in the provinces of Baha. Antikira Basket in Bohol these handicrafts are made out of whatever native material is in hand, from bamboo, rattan, wicker, nito, bori, sigid, and other vines. Commonly, its raw materials include a wide range of plant fibers, including roots, cane, twigs, and grasses, weeds, raffia, and basket willows. Antikira basket are done through basket weaving, which is common in the province of Bohol. And these baskets are particularly woven by the weavers of Antikira town. And for the important point here, this indigenous craft bears an artistic and social purposes in the province of Bohol. These baskets are usually used for harvesting, storage, and transport. And most of the residents of Antikira depend upon the basket weaving industry since it is their main source of income. For years, this has been the town's main industry and with its growth through the years has earned them the title of being the basket capital of Bohol. So aside from this craft being done through basket weaving, there are lots of indigenous craft here in the Philippines that you will surely want to know more about. From the provinces of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, this craft serves as a starting point of manual innovation that has lasting meanings and functions to the society. That is why we should preserve and give importance to it. That will be all for this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.